Hi and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to create a new mini art journal and I'm going to get inspiration from this new color by Tim Holtz. This is the Kitsch Flamingo and I'm going to make lots and lots of different color combos just to play with it and see how it reacts with different colors and how it looks. And since I'm going to do that with a new color, I decided why not turn them into backgrounds. So I'm going to share lots and lots of backgrounds today, turning them into a mini art journal, which is going to be ready for another video where I will create my pages. For my mini art journal I used these dies by Art My Marlene. This is a set that I have from previous collection and I keep using it throughout the year. I did cut out all the pages. These are four I believe here and I used a heavy watercolor paper. I know that I will be playing with different mediums for all these pages and I need to make sure that these are going to hold onto any type of medium that I decide to use for the pages. So I either go with a heavy watercolor paper or with mixed media paper. Either would work perfectly. And you see I have a few splotches on this paper. That's no uh, problem at all. I will be applying lots of color on top of it, so it doesn't really matter. Now, I am going to use many different techniques and I will combine some of them which are, which are my go-to. So I will end up having a mini art journal with lots of pages in different colors. I will have textures, visual texture, with uh, stencils and lots of splashes and stamping and stuff. So you can go ahead and create a mini art journal like I am doing here and you can have it ready for when you have a few minutes to play and create. You will always have a background ready to go and then all you have to do is to just stick a sentiment and now the focal point. So I'm starting by playing with my sprays. Here I am combining Kitsch Flamingo with uh, Spiced Marmalade, which is a color combo that I absolutely love. And I did use that color combo in the previous video where I made a flower card. Now I am going to create lots and lots of pages and in all the pages, the one color that will always be the same is going to be Kitsch Flamingo. This is me playing with a new color and trying to see how it matches with other colors from the same collection and at the same time making an art journal. So here I combined Fire Brick with Kitsch Flamingo. You can use any uh, shade of red from the Distress Oxide line. It's going to work nicely with the pink. Then I'm going to move on and this time I want to see how it reacts with um, Vintage Photo. It's one of my favorite colors and my go-to color actually. So I just had to uh, work with those two and uh, they work beautifully. I think it would make a lovely background for um, Vintage as well as um, Shabby Chic projects. For one side of all those pages I'm working with Distress Oxide ink here so just remember that nothing is going to stay as vibrant as you see the color while it's wet. It's going to dry having a very chalky finish but you can do the same uh, color combos for similar results but brighter if you use the original Distress uh, spray stains. Pinks go nicely with uh, dark shades of blue and they also go nicely with purples so you can play with any shades that you have at home. I am uh, using here um, Kitsch Flamingo with faded jeans and I love the color combo that uh, came out. Also remember that you can help the color blend better and move the color around if you spray water on top. I decided not to for all those pages. Now the front side of all those pages is ready to go. I need to make sure that everything is nice and dry and then I will work on the back side using a completely different technique. So this is how they look once they dry. You can see the colors don't end up looking so vibrant as they did while they were wet, but it really depends on which uh, type of medium you decide to go with. If you go with Distress Spray Stain, then it's going to look vibrant. For the back of all these pages, I'm going to use the infamous smooshing technique. So I'm using my craft mat here. This is the non-stick craft mat that comes with my glass mat. And I'm uh, smooshing some uh, Distress Oxide ink on top of that. Always Kitsch Flamingo and one more color. This time I'm going with yellow and that was Mustard Seed. I'm going to spray some water on top and just smooth the paper. I'm not going for a complete coverage of the pages. You will see that I will end up having some layers here and there. I can always dry it out and repeat the process without introducing any new colors until I'm happy. My goal here is, however, not to cover up 
all the space, I can always go back with my blending tool if I need to add some more. I'm moving on to another page. This time I'm combining another dark shade of blue, which has some purple inside, that's chipped sapphire. I did spray water on top and then I'm going on top with the paper. I'm going to smooth it here and there, getting a first layer. You can see it is very light since uh, that's oxide with water, which isn't going to end up uh, giving you a very vibrant look. It's not going to look so beautiful, but you will see that it's going to come together at the end. Some of the backgrounds you may end up not liking. That's not a problem at all. You can add layers upon layers to change them a little bit. And there are also lots and lots of techniques that we can do on top, which is something that I'm going to show you today on how we can turn them into looking completely different. Now I'm moving on to another combination and this time with seedless preserves, which is one that I absolutely loved. And if you notice, I'm working on pages that have similar colors on the other side. I am doing that on purpose because in case I have a smudge or a smear on the other side, it's not going to matter since colors are going to be quite similar. And it's going to blend nicely with the rest of the background. And now finally for the fourth page, I'm going to work with ground espresso. I went with a darker shade than, of brown than a vintage photo just to see how it looks. And I absolutely love the result. You will see how this page is going to come together at the end, which is probably one of my favorites from the whole uh, DIY mini journal that I made today. I repeated the same process on the other side, but it doesn't look similar just because I used more of that uh, pink on this page. And of course, that's the bonus of uh, the technique, because even when you use the same color combo, the same technique, nothing is going to look identical. I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that everything is nice and dry, and then you can stack the pages one inside the other to turn them into a mini art journal. If you want, you can stop here, and when you have time to work on a specific page, you can come back and work on it with stenciling and stamping and more techniques to bring it together with your focal point and your quote. However, I decided to do all that, all these techniques now, so that when I come back to work on a page, I will not have to spend any time on the background. One way to go is to work with stencils. Here I'm working with a baby wipe. This is one of the techniques that you can do. This way I apply some moisture on the ink, which is going to lift it and it's going to give a ghost effect. Alternatively, you can go with your water spray over the stencil. It's going to give you a messy look, but you will get that ghost effect as well. And I'm going to show that to you as well in this video. Now, another way is to use a spray and go over that. You can even clean your stencil on your page. I can also get some splotches if I go very closely with the spray. And the idea here is to add some visual texture. Just use stencils that you have on your stars that are very versatile for any occasion. And here I'm adding some uh, white splashes just because I like them. While this side is drying, I'm going to move on on another page. And uh, first I'm working on all the sides that I use distress oxides on top. I'm going to repeat the same process again with stencils. I'm just playing with different stencils that I have in my stash. I'm never introducing any other color than the ones that are already on the page. I'm uh, playing with water, my baby wipe, and I'm just adding that texture in different ways on the background. And I will always finish with my white splashes. Always remember, you can do what you want on your pages. I'm just showing you my way and my go-to techniques. For this page, I used an alphabet stencil and I went over it with a vintage photo. And you can see how it uh, ends up looking so subtle. However, if you want a more vibrant look, you can go with a different color or even with black. I just like the subtle look because I don't know what I'm going to do on the foreground and I can always add more detail at the background if I want to when I'm working on that page. Here I'm just spraying water. I will use a paper towel to lift any excess and I will go back with the same stencil and this time with my spray to add a little bit of color, and this is the darker uh, color that I used at the background, which is fire brick. It's not going to dry as vibrant as it looks at the moment. I will finish with a few splashes, and this goes to dry as well. 
Now it's time to work on the sides where I did the smooshing. These have uh, enough white space that you can keep if you like that look. I am incapable of leaving white space. I just have to cover it up somehow. So again, I'm working with my stencils, but this time with my blending tool. Again, I will not introduce new colors or my backgrounds. So I'm always playing with the two inks that I used at the background, but this time with my blending tool. Now I am going lightly over the design, so this is not going to cover up the design that I got from the smooshing. It's not going to cover it up completely, you will still get that lovely texture. However, I don't want to see too much of white space, that's why I have to do that. This is by no means something that you have to do. There are people that embrace white space and they work lovely with that, it's just not my style. Now here I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, I just decided to go with black at the background. Usually I don't introduce a new color, but uh, in this case I thought that that color combo was too dynamic and I couldn't stay away from black. I think that sometimes it's nice to break our own rules, just to play a little bit with different styles and I'm absolutely happy with how this turned out. And the truth is that black isn't a color, so technically I'm not breaking any of my rules by introducing a new color, I'm just playing with black here. On the other side of the page I'm going to repeat the same process, but this time instead of going with uh, sapphire around the edges I went with the pink. So similar look but a different uh, approach. And always remember that these pages are not going to end up next to each other. So it doesn't really matter if they look identical or if they look completely different. And while you have your stencils out, there are so many different techniques that you can play with for your backgrounds. You can always use some Versamarking and embossing powder to add some embossing uh, texture on the backgrounds. You can even use your paste if you like. I'm just going to keep it quite simple for today since I'm working on so many different pages and I don't want to make the video last for three hours. So here I'm working on the last page, this is the one where I use the pink and the ground espresso, which is the darker shade of uh, brown. And uh, I'm working with this stencil that I had in my stash, I don't know if I ever used this one, but I absolutely loved the outcome and I cannot wait to work on that page. I'm just switching between stencils so that I can play with them, give them some love. It is satisfying for me to play with what I have and at the end of the day to see a pile of the stencils that I used and um, I don't know, it makes me happy. So I'm finishing off with white splashes. This goes on the pile at the side to dry. Oh, and I have another one. This is the one where I used a seedless preserve. And throughout the whole video I'm making backgrounds and I'm showing you techniques that I use again and again. I don't know if this is boring for you, let me know in the comments below. I find it very satisfying when I'm creating backgrounds and it is a great exercise when you don't want to create or you don't have any idea on your mind. You just play with color, with techniques that you repeat again and again. It is repetitive and very therapeutic and uh, you can go on making uh, color combos with your favorite colors on and on. And then at the end of the day you have some backgrounds ready to go and of course in future videos you will see me turning those backgrounds into actual layout pages. And I'm going to finish off with my white splashes. Once everything is dry you can go ahead and do some stamping. I am using some text stamps that I have in my stash and I have them for ages and I use them again and again. You can go with a dark shade of the color that you have at your background if you don't want that to be very vibrant. Or you can go with black. I'm going to show you both ways so you can decide what you like the most. I usually don't want to have uh, a lot going on on my background. I do want to have them look quite interesting with uh, visual texture, but I don't want that to be super vibrant or very busy since I always feel that it uh, steals the thunder of my focal point. So here is the example with the black stamping. I'm mainly staying at the edges, trying to create kind of a border. And remember this is not going to be a double page, so although it looks like if I stamped at the center, I didn't, these are going to be the edges of those pages. I'm also going to switch to a round stamp, just to add some more texture, and I like to have uh, that uh, look at the edges. So this is done, let's move on on another one. And I know that since I have the video sped up, it looks as if I'm uh, working super fast, but I'm not. I'm just enjoying the process. I have my music on and my cat next to me, although you can't see him. I'm just uh, having fun with my stamps, my colors and my inks. 
When you are creating pages like this one, since you are going to bind them with an elastic, the fun part is that you can place whichever you want at the center. So this is where you will have your double spread. Now this one with the yellow and the pink was uh, probably one of my favorites from all those color combos. So I think I decided that this is going at the center for the double spread. But the truth is that we can always change our mind when uh, we decide which focal points we are going to use for which page. The fun about having the elastic is that you can always rearrange the pages. And I will repeat the same process, stamping here and there with different stamps that I grabbed from my stash and different ink colors, always working with archival ink just to make sure that no matter what I decide to do, on top at the end of the day when I decide to work on these pages I'm not going to end up having any smudges or smears. Now here I used the matching die from the pages. These are from the Art by Marlene DIY mini art journal. I cut out two from pattern paper. I will stick them back to back. This way I will have a sturdier cover and at the same time I will not end up having to color the back of uh, my paper which is white. I am using my Nuvo Deluxe glue, my white glue, so that I can slide one paper on top of the other to make sure that I get the perfect alignment. I am gluing only the top part for now, the top flap. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can move on and add glue on the other part. Creating your cover is a great way to use pattern paper that you have on your stash for ages. And of course, you can create your very own cover with your rings if you want to. There are some parts where I can still see the white coming through from the pattern paper, that's why I'm going uh, all over it with my black ink. In this video I'm not going to make any actual pages on those backgrounds that I created and I'm not going to decorate the cover either, however I am planning to do that on another video. So now it's time to tie my elastic and if you follow my videos you know that I recycle the elastic from the masks that we are wearing. So anyway, I am going to tie a knot there and this is the perfect size. I'm going to slide through all the pages and I ended up having that uh, pink and yellow one as my double spread at the center. So here is a close-up look on the mini art journal that I made for today working on all the backgrounds and you will see close-up photos on all the backgrounds as well at the end of this video as well as on my blog. Just like always you will find links to everything I used down below in the description area. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired as I played with the new Kitsch Flamingo color and I combined it with products that I already had in my stash. Let me know in the comments below if you like this type of videos where I create a whole journal just with backgrounds and if you want to see another video turning these backgrounds into actual art journal layouts. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all tomorrow with a fun blog hop.